Hello friends, uh, I hope all of you are doing very well and as you know we have to continue our classes in online form and that's why you know I expect a little bit more from you. Uh, having online classes as most of you know uh, has advantages and disadvantages. Uh, the advantages part is that you know we will move a little bit faster but on the other hand, unfortunately, you will not be able to ask your questions directly. So I will think of a solution to fix this problem, but you know, uh, it will take some time to uh, adapt ourselves to this, to this new situation and environment. Uh, today we are going to start uh, chapter 14, section 1, the hopes of immigrants. So please uh, stay focused and try to uh, pay attention to the details of this lesson. Uh, this lesson has, uh, you know, some uh, uh, very important uh, terms related to uh, the discussed period of America. And uh, most probably you will have some uh, definitions in your exam from this part. The hopes of immigrants. Before, uh, you know, in the previous video that I posted, uh, you learned about uh, the colonial times and in the colonial times wave of, waves of immigrants created a diverse society in America. Today we are going to learn about uh, mid-18th uh, uh, millions of uh, Europeans came to the United States ho hoping to build a better life how these people affected uh, America and how America actually affected them. Uh, before uh, going on, we should know the difference between uh, the uh, terms uh, immigrant and immigrant. Immigrants uh, actually are those people who leave a country. For example, imagine that you are living in Turkey and of course you are the citizen of this country but uh, after some time you want to change your location and live in another place so you become immigrants. On the other hand, uh, we have immigrants. Who are immigrants? These immigrants are people who settle in a new country. So when you move uh, from uh, Turkey to live, for example, in one of European countries, uh, you become immigrant. Many immigrants flocked to the United States in the mid 1800s. Once in the US, they became immigrant people who settled in a new country. Who are these immigrants? Uh, most of them were men, but sometimes whole families. For example, they moved with their families to live in America. Usually, they uh, traveled with, uh, they traveled by a ship in steerage, the cheapest deck on a ship. On a ship that I'm going to show you the picture. Hundreds of people lived together for ten days to a month, and conditions were very, very harsh filthy and many became ill or they died uh, actually you can see steerage uh, the for you know the conditions that you know these people used to live in order to travel from Europe to America uh, why do people move actually we have to find out about uh, the reasons that people move from one part to other part we have pull factors factors that pull people to a location for example, the things that you know, they grab people and they go there and they leave there. Push, uh, push, pull factors of immigrants. Number one was freedom. Second one was economic opportunity, and third one abundant land. As you know, uh, America back then had uh, established itself as the first, maybe one of the first countries in the world that uh, respected the wishes of its people and said, uh, you know, the government must be from people for people, and uh, plus uh, it also. Uh, uh, was one of the few countries that didn't have any kingdom so the president was chosen directly by its people 
there was economic opportunity for most of the people as you know we had lots of abundant we had the uh, land lots of you know uh, free lands and people had this opportunity to establish their own economical uh, jobs works there so this land was a kind of you know um, let's say utopia for uh, most of the immigrants why do people move 1820s to 1860s push factors what are push factors they are the factors that push people out of an area for example you are moving from turkey to a european country why you leave turkey that's called push factor the reasons are called push factors the reasons that make you move from one part to another part uh, number one is population growth the the other one is agricultural changes Th third one crop failures industrial revolution and religious and political turmoil uh, population growth as you know you know some of the countries are all overpopulated for example imagine India that you know uh, some people even live on the street and uh, you know uh, step by step you know the population is growing uh, too uh, too much and you know uh, the country cannot uh, afford to you know take care of all its citizens so that's why some of people try to uh, change their location in order to live in another place uh, crop failures for example imagine uh, uh, f uh, like famine that we have uh, or for example lack of uh, water I mean natural sources for growing food or these kind of things these are other problems but the fifth uh, uh, reason that people try to escape was religious and political problems actually as you know America had the Bill of Rights saying that you know no one can be uh, imprisoned or punished because of having different religions everybody is free to choose uh, their own religions and political politically um, as you know uh, the government had no right to uh, imprison or question the citizens for having different views push pull factors of immigrants as you know as I told you you can see on this page as the the summary of what we studied uh, pull factors right now we are going deep into uh, the core of these terms are the factors that are rest uh, for the immigration problem or f uh, immigration problem in the 18th in the 19th century I mean in 1800s freedom everybody has the freedom to practice the teaching and the religion he prefers second one is economic opportunity Immigrants sought a land where they could support their families and have a better future. Immigration often rose during the times of United States prosperity and uh, fell during hard times. Abundant lands, most of you are familiar, America is uh, back, you know, America back then. But why I say back then? Because, you know, most parts were still unoccupied and people had uh, more opportunities to seize those lands and to start their own life by using farms uh, uh, by uh, uh, growing crops these kind of things uh, the acquisition of the Louisiana purchase if you remember that the Louisiana purchase was uh, a purchase that was re uh, you know done uh, and uh, the this land was taken from uh, uh, Spanish forces and the Mexican sessions gave the United States millions more acres of land to land starved Europeans America was a land of opportunity because you know back then uh, we had lots of problems in Europe and for Europeans America was a, a utopian car, you know land push factors crop failure uh, industrial revolution and religious and political turmoil I'm going to talk about r industrial revolution because about the other ones I I, ta I already talked 
Um, industrial revolutions uh, dealt with the good, goods produced in factories and how they became cheaper than goods produced by artisans. Suddenly, out of work, some artisans took factory jobs, others emigrated. Uh, Germans, we are going to talk about some uh, specific uh, immigrants that they moved to America and how they influenced American society. Germans, actually Germans were the largest immigrants, immigrant groups in the 1800s. They settled in both cities and farms on the frontier. They opened business, businesses such as bakers, butchers, carpenters, so on and so forth. The other one is uh, about Germans. Germans strongly influenced American culture. For example, they introduced kindergarten, gymnasium, Christmas tree, hamburger, and other things. About Scan Scandinavia, the many Scandinavians, uh, Scandinavian immigrants became farmers. They moved to uh, Minnesota. I'm sorry, uh, Minnesota and. Uh, Wisconsin areas that were similar to their homeland with forests, lake, and cold winters. Uh, Chinese people uh, actually uh, they came to the United States after C California gold rush in 1849. Most were miners, but some worked in agriculture and construction. Irish, most Irish immigrants were Catholic, so the, you know, the, one of the reasons was about their religious uh, issues. Protestant Britain ruled Ireland for centuries and did not allow Catholic to vote, hold office on land, or go to school. In the early 1800s, some emigra emigrated to the United States to break loose of their poverty. Irish potato famine. In 1845, a disease attacked Ireland's uh, main food crop, the potato causing a severe food shortage called a famine. The Irish potato famine killed one million people and forced many to emigrate. By 1854, between 1.5 and 2 million Irish had fled their homeland and came to America. In America, the Irish lived in the cities. They did not have money, therefore they settled where their ships had docked. Uh, these Irish immigrants were not educated and had few skills, so they took low-paying jobs. Actually, in America back then, the very low-paying jobs were occupied, were taken by Irish people. Uh, because, you know, uh, they escaped because of the uh, political problems. When you have a problem uh, with your government in terms of politics, actually, you are not capable of transferring all your belongings to other country. That was one of the reasons that these people were f poor. The Irish women worked too, washing clothes or worked as servants. Uh, un uneducated Irishmen built cannons and railroads across the United States. So many Irishmen died doing this work. It is said that there was an Irish uh, man buried under every railroad tie. The Irish, com the Irish competed with free blacks for the jobs no one else wanted. Actually, these jobs were wanted by no one else except black people that they immigrated uh, from Africa and uh, most of them uh, they were slaves or even those that they were not slaves they were looking for jobs and back then America was uh, still uh, racist uh, towards these people. You can see the uh, immigration and settlement between 1820 and 1860. Here uh, you can see the color here that, for example, we have uh, for Germans with red, uh, Great Britain with uh, uh, green, yellow, and blue uh, for uh, Americas, Scandinavia, Scandinavians, and others, uh, respectively. So, uh, overcrowding. What is overcrowding? Many uh, many United States cities faced overcrowding due to the large amount of immigrants and Americans-born citizens 
who uh, were looking for new uh, manufacturing uh, jobs. The North attracted more immigrants than the South because it, uh, it offered higher wages and more job opportunities. Uh, we studied that, you know, in the Northern America was much more developed than Southern part and uh, the life condition there was much more better. That's why even it uh, attracted more people from other countries. Uh, people in the south they still were dependent on their farms on their on the things that they grew in their lands that's why they were not that much developed in terms of uh, industrial revolution uh, why problems might arise from over what why uh, overcrowding uh, actually this uh, uh, there is a problem here I, I do apologize for that what problems might arise from overcrowding there must be what lack of housing you don't have enough house to live with your family this is one of the problems overflowing of toilets and widespread disease okay when you have lots of people living together you will you will have lots of epidemic diseases and crime uh, that back then, we, you know, America had a high rate of crime because there was shortage of police. Some, agree, some immigrant groups set up aid societies to help. Some politicians offered to help in order to get votes. Opposition to immigration. Nativists. Actually, nativists are the people that they were born in America and they wanted to stop immigration because they thought that these jobs, these opportunities are taken from them and they are given to the people coming from other countries. Like today, some Americans opposed immigration. They thought that the immigrants who were too far to learn American ways would outnumber natives. So this was one of the main problems. Immigrants faced uh, prejudice, a negative opinion not based on facts. Nativists, uh, native born Americans who wanted to eliminate foreign influence called themselves nativists. nativists. Some nativists refused to hire immigrants and put up signs like no Irish need apply uh, they formed secret societies and promised not to vote for Catholic or immigrants running for office. When asked about their society, they would answer, I know nothing about it. In the 1850s, nativists started a political party called the Know Nothing Party. Goals of this party were to ban Catholic and foreign-born uh, from holding office. Uh, Cut, cut in immigration and a 21 year wait to become, to become a United States citizen. So uh, Im immigrants were, were supposed to stay at least 21 years in order to become United States citizen. The No Nothing got six governors elected but fell apart since, uh, since the uh, Northern and Southern members could not agree on the issue of slavery. This was the end of the uh, lesson. I hope the best for you. Study very well. And uh, if you have any questions, any problems, please write down your questions because I will try to be in touch with you. I don't know how, but I will find a way. Thank you so much and uh, I wish the best.